Good afternoon, Physics 30. I hope you guys are ready to rock. Yes? Come on, more enthusiasm. There you go. That's a bit better. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your very first official online Physics 30 video. Let me adjust that so we can see a bit better. There we go. And today we are going to be continuing with where we left off on Friday before we had to shut down because of some lovely virus. Um, so we're going to be looking at our moving charges in a magnetic field. We kind of started talking about that a little bit on Friday with our third left-hand rule. So we're going to review that. We're going to talk about that. Then we'll start doing some calculations. Um, we're going to be using said hand rules for your direction of your forces. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, when we're going to be looking at moving charges in your lovely magnetic fields, keep in mind that when you are going to be having a current flowing through a conducting wire, it is going to induce a magnetic field. So that's your Faraday's electromagnetic induction. Now, because moving charges produce a magnetic field, um, a stream of them can produce a magnetic field. A single moving charge itself, such as an electron or a proton or an alpha particle, they're going to have their own magnetic field. And because of that, they can be deflected by set an external magnetic field. So that's what we're going to be starting to look at is how these charged particles could move through these magnetic fields and how they're going to be moved around by them. So as we started talking about on Friday, our third left hand rule is going to be involving, obviously, your left hand. Left hands are for negatively charged particles, right hands are for positively charged particles. So I hope you guys enjoy the meme on your assignment. I made that one myself. First meme I've ever actually made. Pretty awesome. Okay, so with the third left handed rule, your thumb is going to represent the direction the particle is moving. If it's your left hand, it's most likely to be an electron or something of the like. If it's your right hand, it's going to be an alpha particle or a proton, okay? Something like that. So your thumb is going to be direction the direction of the charged particle. And your fingers is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. So their magnetic field is going this way. And then your palm is going to be the direction in which the force is going to be applied to that particular particle. So where your palm is pointing. So there's another way you can use the left-handed rule too. It's if you fold your bottom two fingers in and do this. So this could also be something that may be beneficial to you. Your thumb is still the direction of the moving particle. Your finger is going to be the direction of the external magnetic field. And then this finger here is going to be your direction of your force on that particle. I find that one a little awkward to hold for questions, but you use whichever one floats your goat. Okay. You know, physicists, secret hand gestures, secret hand codes. Yeah. Okay. So we just talked, oops, not that thing. Can't touch that screen. Have to do this. There we go. So ladies and gentlemen, put a star beside this. Uh, you are going to have to memorize all three of the hand rules, okay? So once again, we'll highlight this part of your notes. The positive charge is going to be your right hand. Um, okay, and another thing I want you guys to highlight or star here, okay? is your mag charged particle has to be moving perpendicular to the magnetic field in order to experience a force. If it's moving in line with it, it's not going to experience a force and that's not where we're going to use this. So watch for that word perpendicular. Okay, I'll scroll here. All right, so we're just going to practice a little bit using our left-handed rule uh, with a couple of examples. So bear with me, drawing with this thing is kind of interesting. So we're going to start by selecting the writing tool. might help a little bit. And I'm going to draw a magnetic field. And let's make this side a south bar magnet. 
and I'm going to make this side a north end of the bar magnet. And now we go to draw our field lines. Field lines always go from what to what, ladies and gentlemen? North to south. Absolutely. So you're going to draw your field lines going from north to south across that bar magnet. Now we are going to select a charged particle. Let's change colors here. There we go. So here is going to be my charged particle. I can actually draw my charged particle. There we go. So my positively charged particle, we'll say it's a proton, why not, is going to move through said magnetic field. Now we need to look at what force this guy is going to be experiencing. Okay. What is going to be the direction of force if that's its velocity? So take your left hand, okay, and you are going to point which digit, the thumb, in the direction your charged particle is moving. Now, what would I be deducting myself from points from at this point, guys? I'm using the wrong hand, exactly. This is a positively charged particle. You need to be using your right hand, okay? So for, I know it's maybe opposite to you guys. I wear my watch on my right hand and a bracelet and wedding ring on the left. So that's how you can tell apart which hands I'm using. So my right hand, okay, got the watch. You are going to take your thumb and you're going to point the thumb in the direction that that particle is moving. You're then going to take your fingers and you're going to point it in the direction of that um, magnetic field. So because your field's going this way, now we can use your palm to represent where it's coming. So at this point, the palm, your magnetic force is going in the direction of my face. So which means it's going to be coming out of the plane of the page. So how we're going to communicate this as, well, let's go back to red here. Um, is it's going to be in the direction of a dot. Now remembering that that dot means out of the plane of the page. Into the plane of the page is an X. Okay, so um, that is according to your right hand rule. So uh, we're going to write this down. So right hand rule because remembering three dots in an upside down triangle means because of a positively charged particle. Okay, so that is when it's going to be moving perpendicular to your field. Now notice in our diagram how our field is going this way and our, our particle is moving this way. It's moving perpendicular to that field. So. We can also, we talked about how it can be forced into a in perpendicular to its motion. Now let's look at how we can force that charged particle to move in a circular path. And this is really cool, actually. I quite like this one. I just need to scroll up a bit so I have a bit more space so I can draw this without writing on my face. Okay, so I'm going to draw a series of, of uh, field directions here. So I'm going to draw my field directions as some X's here. Now bear with me, you know how my artwork is iffy at the best of times. And drawing with tech is still even more interesting for me here. Okay. So remembering, ladies and gentlemen, that X means going into the plane of the page. So our field direction is going kind of towards you, okay? So kind of away from my face here, okay? So now I'm gonna change colors to blue again. And we're going to have an electron this time. And our electron, he's gonna enter our field Oh, come on, computer. Why are you doing this to me? There you go. He's going to enter our field here. Now, let's look what he's going to do. Now, it's electron, so left-hand rule, okay? And we're going to point our thumb in the direction that he's going. So the electron's going this way. 
Now we need to put our fingers in the direction of that magnetic field. The direction is going into the plane of the page, and that's where our north arrows are going. Notice that this electron is now going to be directed with a force of upwards. Okay, so when he comes through here, he's going to start being deflected up. Well, now guess what? He's uh, right about here. And now let's use our left hand rule again. And you're going to look at, well, where is it going to be deflected now? The field is still going into the plane of the page, but now our electron is kind of going that way. Well, guess what? It's being deflected in this direction. So that means it's going to be going now kind of like that. Well, now as the electron is right about here, it's and our field's going this way, the electron's going like that. Well, guess what? He's now being deflected kind of that way. This is supposed to be turning into a circle, guys. This is why I don't teach art. Um, Actually, yeah, we're very glad I did teach you ours. Trust me on this one. Um, so now we're going to look at where the electron is here. He's moving this way, which you point with your thumb. Well, now he's being forces this way. So that means he's going to kind of go like this. Now he's doing this. This is really awkward to do while trying to write and film and do all this. And so that he's going to be forced this way. Now we're going like this, so he's being forced that way. Eh. So now the force is causing this electron to go into a circle. It's supposed to be a circle, guys. It, trust me, it's really supposed to be a circle. Okay. So that is how we get our electron to go in a circle. Nice, eh? I like that one. I think it's pretty cool. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I recommend you do is you guys take a moment, pause the video right here, practice on page 146, questions 1 to 13, right at the bottom of the slide. Those are in your workbooks. Do a couple of those till you're comfortable with waving your hands around randomly. Um, well, not quite randomly, but some method to the madness um, to figure out your hand rules. Okay, pause your video. Do, 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 do. Okay, video's done. Paused. You've gone and done your practice problems. And now we are going to go on to our next piece where we're going to throw some magnitude in with our direction. And we are going to start looking at our force of your magnetic force equation. So let's select a pen here. Let's go back to red. And we're going to be looking at, so the strength or magnitude of your force is going to be used with this equation. Now remember, same idea with electric charges. We don't depend on the positives or negatives in order to get your direction. You're going to depend on your, in this case, handed rules as opposed to your, um, laws of repulsion and attraction like we did with electric fields. So your hand rules is where you'll get your direction, less than subtle hint. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to write this down here. So star use hand rules for direction. Make sure you write that down in your notes, please, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so once again, we have to have that particle and in moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay, so here's your equation and you find this equation on your lovely data sheets. And with your FM is your magnetic force as always in Newtons. Remember, this is a vector. So if I ask you to calculate force, I want a direction and you use your hand rules in order to determine your direction. Okay, Q, as always, ladies and gentlemen, is your charge in coulombs, charge of said particle. V is the velocity of said particle. Once again, it has to be perpendicular to that magnetic field. And funnily enough, B perpendicular is the magnetic field strength perpendicular to that motion. That's why we put the perp little perpendicular symbol in there, yeah, perpendicular. 
Okay. And our units are in Tesla, so capital T, um, named after the same guy who Nikola Tesla, who the electric car is named after. And recall how electric motors, they function um, by having a, an electric current flowing through an armature, which will be spinning in the magnetic field and it causes spinning. Yeah, we talked about that on Friday. Um, we'll talk more about it a little bit later. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think was it my crazy one horsepower motor blender was our example. All right. I'm just going to erase these random things that somehow. Oh, wait, right. I can't touch that screen. I have to touch the screen to erase. There we go. See, not much has changed from class. I'm still screwing out with the technology in the middle of a lesson. See, we're keeping it as authentic as we can here. All right. So back to pen. So ladies and gentlemen, an alpha particle. Before we go any farther, ladies and gentlemen, the second we have an alpha particle, that means we have Q and we have the mass of that alpha particle. Where do you find those? Correct, data sheet, on the back of your data sheet. So for your Q, it's two, you'll see it as positive 2E, where E is the elementary charge. The elementary charge is 1.62 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So that means your elementary charge is going to be 3 point, or the el charge of an alpha particle, excuse me. It's going to be 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. And the mass Excuse me. I do not have coronavirus. That was just a sneeze. Okay. <laughs> so our mass of said alpha particle is going to be... Oh, goodness. I can't find my data sheet. I'll look it up later if we need it. Okay. But we have it if you need it. And then we have your... Two parallel plates, your alpha par particles shot between them, two parallel plates, and they have an electric field strength of 9.77 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So that is your E. Now notice, ladies and gentlemen, it's your E with a vector arrow, not delta E. Delta E is change in energy. E with a vector arrow, vector arrow is your electric field. Okay. So 9.77 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons per coulomb. And we're then going to, as this thing is fired through those um, electric plates, we're going to give it a magnetic field or, field or not, just because we can. And so our magnetic field is going to be perpendicular to the particle's motion. So this particle is experiencing both a magnetic field and an electric field. So therefore, and it's got a strength of B perpendicular of your 4.9 times 10 to the power of negative 7 Teslas. That's a T. There we go. So what is the speed? at which the alpha particle must be traveling so it passes through undeflected. Okay, key piece, undeflected. It is experiencing two different forces here. It's going to be experiencing a force from the electric field and it's going to be experiencing a force from the magnetic field. If it's undeflected, it's not going to be experiencing a net force. So our, that turned out great, there we go, F net, is going to equal zero newtons, okay? So let's look at our F net equation here. So if we go F net is going to equal our F electric plus a negative Fm, we can rearrange this. Now remember, F net is zero. It's undeflected by this field. So we cancel that out, so that's going to be zero, and I add my Fm, I'll write my zero down because I can, that's going to cancel, 
and I then add my FM over here, so I wind up with FM is going to equal FE, okay? So the strength of my magnetic field is going to equal the strength of my lovely magnetic field. Now, we can't do much with this at this point. We got to equate some other equations here. Well, the equation we just looked at is our beautiful for magnetic field is Q V times B perpendicular is going to be this for your magnetic force that that particle is going to experience. Okay, then that really turned out not very nice. Let's make that look a little bit nicer, a little more legible here. There we go. Got a nice equal sign. There we go. And then keep in mind our force electric is equal to EQ. Okay, that's an equation we've already used a ton. I hope that you guys can connect where I got the FE and EQ. So now I'm going to scroll down so we can actually let's see what's going on here. Now that stuff didn't go very well here. Let me erase this up here. Sorry, guys. No, I can't touch that thing. So I fight with the technology so we can actually have somewhat of a decent lesson here. There we go. Well, as close as we're going to get, I guess. Okay. So we have our QV times B perpendicular is going to equal our EQ. Now, note this, the EQ and the Q here, well, that's both the charge of that alpha particle. These are both the charge of the object in the field. It's both going to be the same, so I'm going to cancel that out because it's the same value and they're only in one term. So V times B perpendicular is going to equal E. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to divide this by my... B perpendicular in order to cancel that out to isolate my speed. And I have my E, which is your 9.77 times 10 to the power of negative 4. And I have my B perpendicular, which is 4.97 times 10 to the power of negative 7 Tesla. I'm just going to scroll down a bit and then reselect my pen tool and my V, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 1993.877 dot 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 meters per second for our speed. Now what this is going to give us, the question I asked for was speed. So that means I don't need a direction because that's a scalar value. But I am going to need sig digs. So when you come back to your question, well, three sig digs, three sig digs. So I need three sig digs. So I'm going to have to put this into scientific notation. So your V is one. Well, three sig digs, that's going to round up. Oh, no, no, it won't. 1.99 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? Oh, come on, computer. Yeah. We're having tech issues here, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a brief break after this. Um, I will stop this video here and deal with the tech problems I'm currently having. And then uh, we'll have a second video that will continue with the lesson. So we will see you in a moment. Now let's see if I can actually shut this thing off. Pretty cool if I could figure out how to do that. Okay. See you guys shortly.